Hey! So it's been a while and I wasn't sure what to do for today's video after coming back from the break. You know when you go to your grandma's house for some time and when you come back your room feels like it's someone else's? No? Uh, well, still, that's how I feel right now. And to help me make me feel at home again, I wanted to play something that I used to play as a kid. But again, I wasn't sure what. I checked your suggestions and a lot of you guys seem to really want me to review a crash game. So that's what we're doing today. Welcome to the best crash game ever made. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, not that one either. Oh, come on. Yeah, so I don't think I'm ready to get back to the original trilogy yet. Those are games that I truly love and I think I need some more experience so I can make a longer and more in-depth video about them. And also, Crash Team Rumble is set to be out soon, so there's that. Crash Bash is a spin-off of the Crash Bandicoot series, released in the year 2000, one year after Crash Team Racing, so you can safely say that it had some pretty big shoes to fill. It's the first Crash game that wasn't developed by Naughty Dog, and the last game to be a PlayStation exclusive. The game starts with an argument between Aku Aku and Uka Uka. Uka Uka, how many times must you be told you cannot defeat me? I have heard enough of your sh** wisdom. It is I who is the strongest, and it is evil that will ultimately prevail. So they pick their teams, and Aku Aku asks for two bad guys to play on his team. Because there's too many and it wouldn't be fair. So Uka Uka is like, okay. And then you can pick your character. You actually do that before the cutscenes, but it seems wrong. Also, I don't know why the bad guys would agree to play on the good side of the battle instead of the evil one, but sure. It's pretty cool that they also let you play the story mode as the bad guys. Throughout the story, you get some cutscenes in between levels, and you can see what's happening on both sides depending on who you're playing as. It's just some small attention to detail that you wouldn't care if it wasn't there, but it's nice to see that it is. That also means I can play as Cortex. This is your hub area, where you can pick different levels just like in Crash 2 and 3. One thing that I noticed is that the graphics changed a bit. Crash's eyes and hair were turned into 2D textures instead of being actual parts of his body. I guess it's understandable since you can barely see it during gameplay in this game. I think besides that everything just looks fine. It is a party game after all. I saw some people praising it for looking better than the first game, but Come on, we're 5 games in already. It's pretty cool that they added some places that you see in older Crash games. Like the water and medieval levels from Crash Warped, the jungle levels from the first game and... Uh, uh, well, there's probably something from Crash 2, but I didn't play that one very much so I can't remember. For the gameplay, it depends. There are mini games that I had a lot of fun with, and there's some that are unbearably bad in my opinion. There's 28 minigames and 7 categories of them, meaning there's 7 minigames and some variants of them. For example, there's this minigame where you have to ride polar and push your enemies out of the ice, but in the next warp room you have to play it again but it doesn't have the borders around the ice, and then you have to play it again but now there's power ups and so on. Some of my favorites were the ball minigame, where it's like rod hockey but with 4 players, the one where you can move around and you have to defeat everyone by throwing boxes at them, and the pogo stick ones, where you have to paint the floor by stepping on it and get a box to turn the squares into points. Those are cool. I think there's enough to keep you entertained for a while, but I wouldn't expect to go back to it often, especially because unlike Mario Party, there's no board or stars to keep the game flowing. The best you get is a tournament mode where the game counts who won more games. There's also a boss fight at the end of every warp room. It's a nice change of pace after repeating some of the minigames, but they do get a bit hard the more you get into it. I think I like the minigames where you can move around and jump the best, but the racing minigame is easily, by far, the worst minigame. In my opinion. It's the most chaotic minigame in the game, and either I don't understand how to play it, or it's just plain bad. You are constantly turning right and there's so many hazards that it makes it almost impossible to win. Actually, when you think about it, it sounds a lot like NASCAR. 
the music in this game it's for me where it shines the most I know you might be thinking, oh my god, there he goes again with the music, but really, there's a mixture of old themes remixed and some new ones that are just really good. I didn't notice the music at first and when I was in the middle of the game I was like, oh damn, this is actually pretty good. You then discover Aku Aku's plans of stealing the crystals, which you would have known if you played as the bad guys. So Aku Aku just hides it, and Uka Uka is like, okay. Unless of course you were playing as the bad guys. Then you get a cutscene where Uka Uka gets the crystals. What do you mean the earth is mine? It was my plan all along. Now I have all of the crystals and all of the power. How can this be? Was it so naive of me to believe that goodness on its own could triumph over evil? Now Luca Luca has the crystals. The earth is surely doomed. Run, Crash. Hide, my friends. Save yourselves. There is nowhere to hide but the rock of the mighty Uka Uka! <laughs> well, that would have haunted my dreams. I know there are cheat codes for these games, but for some reason I could not get them to work. I think it has something to do with different versions of the games from what I've seen online, but I'm not sure. I think I remember them from when I was a kid, but it didn't work for me anymore. Oh, and there's also this cheat code where you can play a demo for Spyro. Oh, good times, it's really sad that you can't do this type of thing anymore. In my opinion, it's overall an okay game. It has fine graphics, great music, lacks a bit on the minigames, but most of the ones that are there are fun. Uh, not you. The game received mixed reviews when it came out, but ended up with a cult following in the later years. I even found this fan game someone made called Crash Bash Live, which adds a board to the game and features the open world from Crash Tag Team Racing. You need a dedicated community for such thing. But anyway, I think that's it for this one. It's another game I don't think I'll get back to anytime soon, but it was mostly fun for the time I was playing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, it really helps me a lot. Oh, and a huge thank you for our new members. H F G F D C R D T R E D and Jason Thomas. Being a member truly helps me directly, so thank you everyone for supporting the channel. And by the way, if you became a member and I didn't give you a shout out yet, let me know in the Discord. It's a little confusing to keep up with the members sometimes, and with the two week break I just took, it might have taken me off track. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.